spoke to Jace earlier today and told him that we were relieving him of his duties as the manager of the Padres. Uh, you know, in the last two years, Jace led to the led, led the organization to some really exciting moments, uh, including the postseason last year, and uh, and winning the postseason series and getting to the uh, uh, to the division series. I think um, I think one of the things you know everybody's felt around San Diego here over the course of the last couple of seasons is you know the the excitement and the passion that the fan base has. I think a lot of that is built on the fact that. Uh, there's a belief that uh, that that this team is, is is a team that's capable of winning a world championship, uh, and, w- and will be a team that'll bring a world championship to San Diego. Um, you know, I, I think those raise expectations. I think it's something that uh, um, you know, overall, from an organization standpoint, that uh, you know, and from a national scale, that um, you know, that uh, that you know, we've we've embraced. And it's my my responsibility ultimately to put a, a product on the field that can deliver on those world championship aspirations. And a, a big part of that responsibility for me is hiring a manager and, and a staff uh, that's able to execute the organization vision. And you know, ultimately, I felt like this was a change that that we needed to make uh, in order to get us on that big stage. Uh, we feel like we have a talented roster. We feel like we have a team that uh, you know that uh, that should play into October. And you know, I feel like uh, you know the decision today. Uh, just reflects that, and and ultimately, you know, it's my job to get this right here over the course of the next few months, uh, so that we're in a position uh, we look back on this year as an aberration, and we're in a position where we're playing consistently into October. So, with that, I will uh, open it up to any questions and, and go from there. AJ, these decisions are never easy, but given the long-standing relationship that you had with Jace, how much more difficult did it make it for you to have to make this call? Uh, no, I mean, they're, they're not, not easy decisions. Jace is a, I mean, he's a tremendous, he's a tremendous person. Uh, he's a really good baseball person. Um, you know, he's, he's a guy that's got, you know, knowledge and expertise. And, uh, you know, again, I think uh, anytime you're, you're, you're sitting there and you're talking about, uh, you know, relieving somebody from their duties or, or making a change, don't take them lightly. Um, you know, I think we've had a lot of conversations with Jace over the course of, of the season and, yeah, the last couple of years, really, um, and then into the second half, and you know, even into the last five or six days, about uh, things that we've done well, things we need to to improve, things I need to improve on, um, you know. But ultimately, you know, just get to a point where I've you know, it's my job, got to do what I feel like is right for the organization, and um, you know what uh, what what we need to do, and and ultimately made made the call here this morning. Again, like uh, you know, the the baseball we played over the last two months, and I've I've said this to to everybody I've talked to, players, staff, everything. I mean, obviously, there's there's a lot of reasons why you you know you you go you know and play at a, a twelve and thirty clip or whatever that was at the end of the season. Um, you know, it's never one thing. It's not a, a you know a single managerial decision, a strategy decision. Um, you know, honestly, a a tr- you know, one trade decision. Um, you know, ultimately, we, we just couldn't get the team playing, uh, you know, ex- executing on all phases. You know, at times there was, you know, start, you know, look up and we'd get a quality starting pitcher performance and we wouldn't hit. And then at times the offense uh, would not perform and, um, you know, and the pen would let us down. And, and ultimately, at the end of the day, it, it wasn't one thing. It's never going to be one thing from a performance standpoint that way. Um, you know, I think uh, I think from our standpoint, it's it's uh, you know now's really the time to sit back and go, okay, how do we make sure this uh, that we get this right here going forward? And you know, I think obviously the change today that's that's uh, that's a step, and and we'll keep looking at some other uh, some other things from the season. And how important is previous managing experience going to be for you? Yeah, I think the experience question. I mean, I, there's there's a lot of different ways to get it. You know, there's a lot of different types of experience and. Uh, I think, again, like you look at all the successful managers, successful coaches in other sports, successful managers in baseball, there have been guys that, you know, their second or third job, they've learned a ton from from a previous job or two. There are guys that have played for a long time, have come right off the field and, you know, have become really successful managers. There are guys that have kind of grown up in an organization and cut their teeth in the minor leagues and gained experience that way. So experience is always important. Um, you know, I think, again, like we'll, we'll get more into this over the course of the next couple of weeks, the factors that we'll be looking at. But um you know again like you know leadership guys that that that, uh you know guys that get players to perform guys that have you know expertise and content um you know there'll be uh there'll be a list of things that uh that that the best leaders have and you know ultimately uh you know we'll we'll we'll, uh we'll we'll be looking at the best and the brightest here over the course of the next few weeks to uh to get this right um how much of this is on you for having hired a second straight inexperienced manager 
Yeah, I mean, I think I think ultimately, you know, like the responsibility for for the for our, our you know the baseball product and our team, you know, falls on my shoulders. And the response, you know, I think the uh, you know the, the coaching staff and the manager, um, you know, I think that's all part of it. I think, again, like to me, like when you look at you know you, you know the the progression from the last you know six or seven seasons. You know, I think the the you know hiring Andy in the first few few years, we knew we were in a, a building type situation, and, and ultimately, you know, from Andy laying down, you know, some of the building blocks, the foundation pieces. Um, you know, again, it was not a roster talent wise that you know we looked at and said we're capable of winning World Series at that point in time, um, but we were looking to try to get ourselves into a position where consistently year in year out we we're going to play into October, and I think the last two years. With Jace, we took steps. You know, I think obviously last year getting to the postseason, winning a playoff series. You know, this year you look up and a team that you know led you know the wild card chase for probably three quarters of the season. I think those are those are meaningful steps. And you know, again, I think Jace uh, oversaw a lot of good moments here in the last couple of years. I think really the the part of it that we have to get right right now is you know getting a coach and a staff and and really the whole baseball operations group in a spot where we can win a world championship and. Okay, and I apologize if I missed this, but did the rest of his staff get fired as well, or is there things still to be determined? Yeah, so I, I talked to the staff as well today. Um, you know, talked to the majority of the coaching staff, let them know uh, that they're they're free to to pursue other opportunities and and other possibilities. I think those will be individual conversations, but really the the you know the main uh, the main focus right now will be on getting a manager and then. You know, allowing that manager to, uh, to to look at putting a staff together, and I'm sure there'll be you know coaches that we have currently in house that we'll look at, uh, but ultimately, you know, the focus right now is on getting a manager. Okay. Last thing from me: Did any of the big league players come to you to complain about Ting and the job he was doing, and that he wasn't the right guy for the job? Yeah. I mean, I, again, I, I've uh, you know you'll you you know you you'll talk to the players. Um, you know, that's always a kind of a slippery slope in terms of. Uh, you know, in, in terms of, you know, soliciting and going to players and, and polling players on, on what you want to do from a managing standpoint. I think the biggest thing, you know, that, that we've tried to do over the course of uh, the last few weeks with the players is just trying to, you know, have the group look at it and, and conversations about what, what we could do differently, you know, like overall and what we feel like went right or wrong. Um, you know, so, you know, I was not out there, you know, talking to, to, to players, obviously guys, it's an open door. If guys want to come in and tell me, Hey, this is what I think, uh, this is what I think went right or wrong. Um, I think the biggest thing that we, that we got to look at is, you know, is, is, is starting by looking at yourself and kind of, you know, and that's, that's where I, you know, would go to and say, Hey, here's some things that I need to get right. Um, you know, and, and again, I think, uh, I think in terms of this decision too, it was not like, hey, he could not come back because of our players. I did not feel that way. I felt like he could have come back and, and managed in the clubhouse and, and, and managed this group. I just more ultimately it was, you know, the, the hard question of do I think uh, do I think Jace will ultimately is the best person to get us to that world championship and, and to get us playing deep into October. And obviously with the decision today, I felt like uh, somebody else in that chair was, uh, was, the, was, was the better call. What do you assess where – the, as the biggest reason for why the lack of performance from what was expected and w- was just there in the first place and, and what needs to change to get those guys performing to where they need to be, whether it's staff wise or, or individual player wise. And does that necessitate maybe a bit of a roster shakeup? Yeah. I mean, I think, I think, um, you know, again, I think there's, there's, there's a few different things that, that, that contribute to that. I think probably, you know, as important as, as you know, making sure that, that we're on the same page, that there's alignment from ownership to the front office, to the, you know, the coaching staff and to the players, that there's a clear message. And, you know, I think, um, you know, I, I think that, you know, that's something that for sure that, that I need to get better. We need to get better as a group. Um, I think we really had in 2020, I think that was something that we did very well. I think maybe because of the COVID season, um, I think there was a ton of involvement. I was very involved, and I think there was a lot of involvement really up and down throughout staff, players, getting opinions, getting thoughts, uh, trying to make collective decisions on what's uh, what's best for the group. And you know, maybe a little bit, maybe let let the group, uh, you know, maybe felt like the group could uh, could could run from or, or could kind of take off from last year. And you know, ultimately, I need to do a better job of getting some people on the same page. And I think that'll. That that in itself may seem, you know, I think that that in itself, I think will will uh, will lead to some some pretty clear, honest messages that should lead to some performance. I think honestly, like the the injury factor is a real factor. You know, I think you know roster wise, uh, we were hit hard. I know other teams have been hard, hit hard as well this year. 
Um, you know, but I think that's something that we'll look at. Why did that happen? Is there a way we can prevent that? Um, you know, how do we continue to build quality depth? Um, you know, so ultimately we're able to, uh, to withstand some of those things. Um, but again, I think, I think getting, getting the group on the same page, um, you know, I think communication wise from, uh, from myself to, to the staff manager and the players, just making sure it's really clear what the expectations are. I think that's something that, uh, that we clearly can do better. And I think that'll, uh, I think getting that right over the course of the next uh, four or five months will, uh, will, will lead to some performance change as well. Hey, AJ, when we spoke, I want to say after Rothschild was fired and after the trade deadline, you had made it pretty clear that Jace was going to be your guy for next season. So what ultimately changed your decision um, the final month and a half of the season? Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, again, I think, you know, you, you look at these situations and, you know, I, I think, you know, at, at, that, at that point in time, yeah, you know, you're sitting there figuring, I'm you know, looking at saying, I hope Jace is here for the next, you know, for the next decade. And, you know, I, again, I think you get to the end of the year, um, the performance down the stretch. I think some of the some of the things that we saw on the field, um, you know, I think some of the conversations that I had, um, you know, with uh, with our staff, you know, it, it wasn't any one thing. It wasn't like, you know, one one incident or one moment. It wasn't like, a, you know, a St. Louis series that I could point to. It just really came down to it overall, kind of looking at, uh, you know, at the uh, the last, you know, you know, really like the, the way the season played out. It's got to a point where I felt like, you know, having a staff that could execute that vision, having a manager and saying, is Jace that guy? Is Jace a guy that can, you know, that could put, uh, you know, the, the coaching staff and the players and, and be really clear on what, what's needed and uh, work with the front office to do that. I just felt ultimately that, um, you know, in order for us to get to where we needed to get to, it was going to be, it was going to be somebody else in that chair. And, and that's the truth. There wasn't like one thing that changed or anything like that. It was just kind of looking at the overall body and, you know, getting, getting together. And uh, again, getting to a point where I felt like, you know, this is, uh, this is not what we need to, to go from a team that's in contention and contended for most of the year to a team that can win a World Series. Uh, I just felt like we needed, needed a little different message. And you said a couple of times that you needed a coaching staff that executes the vision of the organization. Did you feel like there was a disconnect between your coaching staff and your front office as far as philosophy? Uh, I mean, I just think like, again, it's, it's a, uh, you know, again, like this, it's a, it's a positive when you have, you know, obviously it's a clear process. You have, uh, you know, you have everybody, people that are on the same page that are clear with like, Hey, this is, you know, this is what we need to do to be successful. And yeah, I think, you know, as, as we got through, I think there were, you know, ultimately the ability to, to get everybody on the same page, um, you know, from, from the manager to the coach, that was something that, that we talked about throughout the year. Um, and again, that's, that's probably like the biggest thing from my end that uh, I'll make sure that uh, we get right here going forward because it starts with myself. It starts with, uh, you know, from, from myself down, you know, down to the, to the staff um, that we've got to, you know, make sure everybody's really clear on what's expected. And I don't think we really got there this year. And that's something that I think, uh, I've got to do a better job with here, uh, as we get into the off season. And then, you know, I think of the way it works and the way it's worked here in the past, um, you know, it was really clear, like, Hey, this is, this is what the expectations are. And this is what we need to do if we're going to be successful, either on an individual player level or a group level. And then it's up to the coaches to do their job to execute it. And, that part uh, I've got to get right here going forward. So do you think that one of the things that you need is, is better buy-in from your staff as to what the organization's vision is? Uh, I, yeah, I don't know. That's, that's, that's kind of a tough question. I mean, I think, um, you know, I, I think overall, again, like I think the, you know, it's, it's, you know, to me in terms of what you're looking for, you, you know, you sit down and you have, there's always a lot of debate about what, what you need to do with an individual player or a situation or anything like that. But I think, again, having people that understand, hey, the goal is to, is to get players to achieve or overachieve, honestly. And we're going to do everything we can in our power to, uh, you know, to do that and, and use all the tools possible. Um, and having people that, that love that challenge, accept that challenge. You know, and a lot of times getting getting to that point in time, there may be some disagreements and some, you know, some different uh, strong opinions, and that's healthy. That's a good process, and we've always had that here in the past. Um, you know, and then when you when you go out on the field, it's it's a unified approach. And you know, I think there's exactly why we didn't quite get to that this year. I think you can debate it, and I think, um, but ultimately, you know, like from like I said a few times, I think that's uh, that's that's our challenge here in, in the next couple of months is. You know, getting a staff that understands that, you know, coaching staff, front office group, um, 
you know, and again, that it's uh, this is about the Padres, you know, and this is not, hey, this is what the players want or a coach wants or the manager wants or the GM wants. The best groups are like everybody understands this is what's best for our group and our team. We've had that here in the past. We didn't quite have that this year. And to me, ultimately making the change today is about uh, is about making sure that we, we get people that uh, that understand that and can push forward on that, on that goal here going forward. The structure of how you do things, uh, will that depend on the manager or will it still be the same, AJ, where you let the manager kind of handle the the day to day of the team? Uh, is that going to be the, the same? Yeah, I mean, I, again, I, I think it's up to the manager. I know this is, you know, we've, we've had some of these conversations. I think it's the manager's job. Uh, to use his tools and resources. And that's that's the front office, you know, that you have conversations all the time about, hey, what's best, what's best for, you know, in terms of playing time, in terms of who should be in what spots. Um, but ultimately, I feel like the managers, when he writes that lineup, he's got to feel confident in his decisions. And I've got to give him the resources possible to make those decisions. So if that's, you know, more information, if that's a, you know, a, a different opinion from my standpoint, if that's conversations with our scouts, um, it's as, if that's healthy conversations with the coaches, I don't think that's going to change too much, honestly, because I just think that's a good process. And I think ultimately you want to have a manager that feels confident when he's when he's putting those lineups or he's making those decisions in place. It's my job to challenge and, and ask those questions and, and really all of baseball ops uh, job to have some checks and balances. And then at the end of the day, you know, it's going to be very supportive of, hey, go out in that game and execute the strategy and, um, you know, and, and do the things that you feel like you need to do. I don't think that'll really change, but obviously each manager is a little bit different. Each situation is a little bit different. And, you know, you got to kind of feel that out, you know, depending on the personality and, and the skill set of the, 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 you know, the person we end up hiring. Given the managerial and on-field records since 2015, how much pressure do you feel or should you feel on this particular hire? You know, I mean, I think, I think for us, you know, obviously from, you know, we talked about it, you know, starting in 2015, it's probably gonna be about a five year process. We got to 2020 and we had a team that, you know, um, that was, that was, that was contending a team that, uh, you know, could, could play deep into October. Um, you know, and again, I think with, uh, with, you know, not playing into October this year, that there's real disappointment there. And, you know, I feel it frustrated, disappointed, obviously, you know, I think everybody around San Diego felt it because there's, you know, I think the reason why everybody's excited and, you know, just seeing like the stadium packed with tons of energy, um, you know, tons of passion is because the fans and I think everybody on this call could feel like this was a team that could win a World Series. And, you know, obviously, like, I don't know if it's pressure. I think it's, uh, you know, it's wanting to make sure that, uh, you know, that, that, we, that, that we have people that, that love and, you know, want to, uh, you know, again, like want to, want to, want to put, want to, want to, you know, reward the fans for their, for their love of this team. And, you know, I think, you know, the person that embraces that, loves that, sees that as a challenge that they're, they're gung ho about. Um, and they see a really talented roster that they can take to a different level. That's, uh, that'll be the person that we put in this chair here going forward. Thank you. AJ, how much say did Jace get in choosing his own staff? And do you think you feel like you set him up for success in a, especially a fall 160 game season in that respect? Yeah, no, he, he was involved in the decision for all of, uh, for all of the staff. So, I mean, I think, um, you know, sat, sat in on every interview, uh, again, like I think, uh, you know, each one of the staff members that we had, it was somebody that, that we both left and excited, you know, about, about the, uh, you know about about the the group that we put together, and you know I know Jace like you know we've had this again. I know he he'll tell you he was excited about the group when we put it together. He in that role like you know he has veto right. He can say hey you know I want this guy, don't want this guy. Everybody we had over the course of the last couple of years, um, you know Jace was was excited about wanted to work with, and uh, you know and, and ultimately I I allow him to make that decision in terms of who he's hiring, et cetera. And I think this year like. You know, we got to the second part of the season, the Larry situation. You know, that's that's where Jay's kind of stepped up and said, "Hey, I, I need a different voice in this chair, et cetera." Um, you know, pushed back for for a period of time, and then ultimately allowed him to make that change. But from the hiring process, you know, he he sat in on all the interviews. He was ultimately signed off as the final sign off. And um, you know, again, we had a group that was a talented group. Did some really good things last year. We just, uh, you know, ultimately for a lot of reasons. Uh, just didn't get it done this year, and that's something we've, uh, you know, we, we, we've got to get right here in the next few months. And when you talk about setting clear-cut expectations, what's what's an example of that, like maybe something that you think wasn't executed to your liking or to Jason's liking this year? 
Yeah, I mean it's you know it's it's all there. Some may be on an individual player, you know, like in terms of hey, this is this is you know if we feel like this player is going to maximize their ability, this is something they need to be able to do on the field. Um, and then it's uh, it's all it's up to the coaches to go out there every single day and, and work towards that goal from an offensive standpoint. Yeah, we'd like to have an offense that uh, that puts pressure on the opposing team, and you know that's a big picture goal. And how do we get there? There's a lot of different ways you get there, um, but ultimately. I think just making it clear this is what a successful offense looks like, for example, and you know just basically then uh, then having those conversations about the different ways we can get there, um, you know, and then making sure we follow through on it. So I think and uh, you know, I think those are those are different conversations. You know, thousands of conversations that come up throughout the year, um, you know, and I think you just got to make sure that again that uh, that we have a staff that's able to execute. Um, you know, what are some pretty clear goals and vision for uh, you know for our players to be successful.